I think what we'll do is just, I'm going to roll through very quickly just a brief history of Ikebana and how it got started. So, Hiroshi Teshigahara, who was the teacher of my teacher, had a saying, and Tamiko always loved to quote this, and he said, if you have grass and you have the moon, you can make an arrangement. Mm -hmm. So that sets the tone for the constraint that we'll be trying to achieve today. That's what we're going to aim for. We'll aim for this kind of, instead of being all the way out here all the time, we're going to bring our sensorium in to a very constrained and one-pointed attention. So Ikebana started out, it is an art. And, and it's in the same sense that painting and sculpture are arts. So that's very different from what we see arranging as in the West. In the West, we do it for aesthetics or visual beauty or celebration or what have you. But there's never been that I know of a focus on flower arranging as a sublime art that's meant to uplift in a spiritual manner. So that is a focus of the Japanese way and in the Ikebana. So it has a recorded history, and it has undergone a coherent development. So it was very deliberate. It, it was not haphazard. The approach was very studied and reverent. Timeline? What? When did that we'll start? get to that. Okay. Um, now, it's also a discipline. As many of you know, and Patsy would really understand this because she studied for so long, it's very disciplined, and there are rules that you, that you follow. So there are particular ways that you learn how to place the flower and the ratios of the flower to the container so that the overall effect has a geometric coherence, and it's pleasing to the human body to experience. So I one time actually realized in Tomiko's class, I was just lucky one night and I did a really good arrangement, and I noticed that I felt it here. I was like, oh, I'm just kind of like, done, right? I think you kind of know that feeling. Like, done. Or you can feel if something is discordant. If a stem is in the wrong place, it's like you don't quite know why it doesn't feel right, but it doesn't feel right. And Tamika would come, and in her polite way, she would look at every person's arrangement, and the first thing she would say is, oh, that's lovely, how beautiful. And then, but, <laughs> right? Or she would move the stem five degrees, and you could feel, okay, it's right. So it's a discipline. It has a technical discipline, and is backed up by articulated theories. So they were able to articulate that. It's creative, so it brings out your creative juices. That's why we set everything up the way we did. We wanted people to come in and first see the row of flowers, like, oh, this is the material we're going to work with. So the first thing you're hit with is something to stimulate your creative juices. Like, oh, ooh, I want to try that, and I want to try that. By comparison, the usual Western treatment is naive. Naive not in a derogatory sense, but innocent, not, not focused with a Telios with an end meaning, right? It's just for pleasure or enjoyment, which is great, but it's different. It's not better or worse, it's different. So on the whole, it's more personal and the ego is involved. So I'm going to make this beautiful arrangement. Oh, it's going to be a wow. Oh, everybody's going to love it. But in this discipline, it's more to tame the ego and to bring you, you to one-pointedness and stillness. And you'll see the difference, too, with the use of negative space. 
So if the space is all crowded up with too many lines, you can think of each stem you put in as visible thoughts. So if you're trying to quiet your mind, the more stems you have, see them as a busy mind and more thoughts going on. In the Japanese way, if you're approaching it spiritually and your whole focus is to quiet the ego, then you want, just like in Yoga Sutras, just the bare facts, just a very thin line of a thread, a sutra. There, in Sanskrit, the word sutra is cognate with our word suture, meaning thread. So it's a thread of an idea upon which you build. So that's where the negative space comes in. Okay, and on the whole, haphazard. Now this was taken from that book, Molly, would you just hold up the big book, please? The little book? The big one. Oh, the big one, yeah. So this was written by a Westerner, or was it not? It was not, it was a Japanese person. Uh, but this art of arranging flowers, this book is a classic. And I took most of the information on this flip chart out of that book. So it's not just my own ideas. It's taken almost directly out of that book. So they're seeing that as haphazard in the sense that it's not focused and it's not a discipline in the same way. Okay, it, but it's also used as decoration. So that's how the tokonoma comes about. So this whole set here that you see in the Japanese home, it came at a certain period where they had in their living rooms an alcove called a tokonoma. And that's where this, there was always a piece of art and a platform and perhaps something hanging. No candle. <laughs> candle came later. Okay, so in Japan, flower arrangements are also used as decorations, but on a level with paintings and other art objects. Okay. That gives you a sense of aesthetic, how this particular aesthetic is presenting itself. Now, most Japanese ladies and men were trained in the techniques of this art since childhood, and that's current in Japan today. And somewhere I have written, and I got it out of the book, there are over 2,000 schools registered in Japan. So it's very much alive and very much a part of the, the whole culture there. So it was considered an appropriate discipline for samurai warriors. And in the beginning, it was primarily done by men. And then later, women came in and were doing that. It was seen as a link to nature. In principle, the Ikebana arrangement aims not at bringing a finite piece of nature into the house, but at suggesting that the whole of nature and creating a link between the indoors and out. So again, there's a thread, there's a sutra coming. I'm going to mix Sanskrit and Japanese up here, but that found its way into Buddhism as well, so I think it's OK. But there's a thread linking, like an umbilical cord. So it's the umbilicus, too. It's not that you're seeing nature as a separate entity, something separate from yourself that you're bringing into your house. Everything is one and all. And this is the thread that's connecting everything together. This was an attempt being made to bring out its full implications as a symbol of nature. And then, just like the Victorians had in America and England and Europe, they had a language of flowers as well. So each flower had its own particular message that it could be impart. In classical Japanese poetry, the very mention of a flower's name is often enough to evoke a whole series of ideas, a cascade of ideas. So when each of you gave voice to how you felt your name would be, what flower name, if you were a flower, what would you be, that lets loose a cascade, a whole series of ideas. It's a revelation of how you see yourself and how you move through the world. So if you see yourself as a moonflower, 
you're very sensitive and open to emotion. So that's a, an, a window into your soul. So, where did I go? In classical Japanese poetry, the very mention of a flower's name is often enough to evoke a whole series of ideas, images, and meanings. So for example, the cherry blossom was seen as manliness and bravery because its blossoms fall very quickly before they wither. So they fall to the ground in perfect condition, and off they go. And autumn grasses were seen as fading summer and the sadness of growing old. <laughs> then it all became more developed and codified. And this is a page from the cover of a book, of the first book known on the subject, called the Senden Show, the oldest book on the subject. And it dates from no later than 1445 answer Eve's question. This short treatise gives comparatively detailed instructions for arrangements to be used on various occasions, such as annual festivals. I'm trying to remember, did I go this way? <laughs> as annual festivals and the celebrations to commemorate a man's coming of age, or entering into the priesthood, or taking a wife. Already it will be seen that the idea of suiting the arrangement to the season or the event was firmly entrenched. So very different from what we have today where we can get tropical flowers in January. Mm -hmm. This just wasn't even possible when this started. So they only used what was available seasonally by demand, really. They, it wasn't even a choice. The Senden Show is a series of brief rules and explanations. It mentions only two technical words for the components of a flower arrangement, that being shin, which is the main stem. So we'll point to that even. This, is, this would be shin. This is soe. They didn't even name this third one in Sogetsu we call hikai. And in different schools, they have different names for it which I have not memorized, but those are the three. But it started out with those two main ones. So the two main components of a flower arrangement, shin, or main branch, and soe, mono, or secondary branches. So the first school, the first formal school was Aikinobo School, and that started in 621 AD. From the Aikinobo family, in quotes, which was in reality a succession of priests and flower artists. Traces of its roots go back to the year 621. Aikinobo literally means priest's residence by a pond. So residence you could translate as temple. So if you look on the table, we've got that pagoda representation with the little mirror that's representing the pond. So that is a representation and an honoring of that first Aikinobo school. And we were just fortunate to have those little pieces to put together. The proper name of the temple, which is in Kyoto, was Rokaku-do. Aikinobo Senkai created a sensation in Kyoto in the Rika style. And Aikinobo is the oldest known school. So this is the Rika style. And the reason we're not even going to attempt this today is because you would need to be a fine cabinet maker to put this together. There are so many pieces in here. This appears to be one stem, perhaps with some side branches. But you can look in that book if you want to see how it's assembled. Tiny little saws. They put things they do like. What do you call it when you moor it? No. Dovetails. Yeah, little like dovetails. Marketry. And, yes. So all that is involved here. These are you can go online on YouTube and see there are people who still do this and it is unbelievable. So we're not doing that. But the next school that comes in is the or style is the Chabana. 
So chai, tea, is where the word cha comes from. So cha and bana means flower. So tea flowers from this root word cha, meaning tea, and bana meaning flower. And it's intimately associated with the tea ceremony. So simplicity and austerity, and it is a subtype of nagere, and nagere is a, is a tall, upright. And this is the chabana, but it's, it's very similar to the next one that we'll do. But this is the chabana. Frequently using only a single flower. There's great freedom and few rules in this. So when you do your chabana arrangement, make sure you just cut those stems underwater. We've provided the little bowls there for you to do that. And all you're really going to want to do is have an eye for how it looks like it's shown off to its most superlative expression. And you'll know when it feels right. Okay, so just be aware of your placement when you put the flower in the container. This is really the best way to do it. Just let it flow easily. So very few rules. Excess ruthlessly cut away. So if you have a stem that has a lot of side branches and a lot of leaves that are competing for the eye, if there's something that's covering the blossom, that little leaf has to go. Okay, so think of other Japanese arrangements that you've seen that actually make you feel like, oh, that's like perfect. Okay, that's what you want to aim for. So you're looking for a feeling of complete serenity and rightness. And when that is achieved, the Chabana arrangement is successfully completed. So what say we do that? May I ask one more question? Mm. Why are you um, cutting underwater? Because air bubbles can get into the stem, and that prevents the flower from drinking water. So that's why most schools do that. Cool. Uh, and I would take anything that's below the water should come off. Okay. And give it a nice left leaning angle when you're ready. Put it back in. Here's the place. Just drink a drop. Just drop it. we're going to do is going to be the nagiri. It's going to be an upright. Do we need water? You need water. So if you would find, if you don't already have an upright container, then um, go on a 
on a hunt. Thank you, Vic. So, when it's time for you to actually do your arrangements, if you go to the third page in, it's going to give you instruction from the Sagetsu book for how to do nagere or nagaire. I can't speak first, sorry. Okay. Right. So I will, I will show you, I will demonstrate, I will talk about it, and then you can go out and you can just look at this and get an idea of what stems you'll need to use. So you'll need three upright stems and three blossoms. And then try to find some little kind of fluffy little filler things to go with at the neck, okay? So that's sort of what you're going to look for. What, what was it? Three upright? Well, three upright stems. And three? Three blossoms. Okay. Okay. And then maybe a little bit of filler right. to go around the neck. Okay. And I think there's even... No, that's it. I'll take that back. <laughs> I need it. Need it. Need it. Okay. The second arrangement is nagaire, or I've also heard it pronounced nagaire. And the nagas are the serpents. In, in, you know, who's, who's been to Thailand? Right, Stacy's been to Thailand. A bunch of people have been to Thailand. And um, so the nagas are the serpents. And I'm sure it's, it's that root is in that word, so nagaire. So, the purpose of this arrangement is to preserve the beauty of nature as directly as possible. So we're thinking here direct perception. So if you are looking at it from a spiritual point of view, your direct perception is that moment of aesthetic arrest when you come across something that's so stunningly beautiful that you inspire. And, and you stop, okay? And there's no thought. There's just that beauty in front of you, so like, it stops you. And all the thoughts come to a screeching halt, okay? That's direct perception. We've all experienced it. You can think of a time where you came across something that was so, oh, it kind of sets you back, okay? That's what we're looking for when we finish the arrangement. So, literally, thrown in, this, I don't know why they, how they get that from that, but literally thrown in the container with, I don't know why they say that, but that's what was in the book. Not too fussed over, maybe. Maybe that's it. Mm -hmm. But that's the literal translation. Starting in the late 19th century, now we've moved very far ahead. Merchant princes had increasing influence in society. Up until that time, the practice of ikebana had only been for men, but now women began taking lessons. So this is the nagaire, and it's usually done in an upright, sort of a cylindrical vase. So you've got some wiggle room, like Molly chose hers is more bulbous. But I think that kind of fits in. Would you say, Patsy, that that yeah, kind of? Yeah, as long as the stem can go in the bottom. Yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. more of an upright. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's more complex and has more rules than the chabana, which is just this one single blossom. Okay, so there's more going on here. We'll have a little more skill. And for those of you who have a wide mouth like Vic, on her container, not that you're not. Um, she's, she's been able to put a Kenzan in the bottom of her container, but maybe again? Debbie. Debbie. Would you just show, well, you yeah. can't tip it because you have water, yeah, in, water in it. But, but there's twigs across it. Like the scaffolding. Yeah, it's exactly. Like those okay. holes. The right? Wood. So if any of you need that, let me know, but I think you're all good. I and see rocks and stuff too. Right. Traditionally, that. what they used was twigs. Twigs. And they would cut it to wedge uh, back and forth into. Uh, and if you can find a, 
notched mm -hmm. one, a triple one, oh. it, so much the better. Oh. So it's got more support for these long stems that would just roll around mm -hmm. otherwise. That's why it's nice to have the Kenzan in the bottom. But the, as we'll see later, the Kenzan didn't come in until much later. So they put those twigs at the mouth or below? Mm -hmm. At the mouth to get maximum mm -hmm. support for each stem. So what I'd like you to do then is look for, as it shows in your instructions, I'm going to go outside and look for three nice long stems of leafy material. Okay, You can use branches too, and we can clip them to fit. And then you're going to look for three showy blossoms, okay, like they have here. They're using, they're using the spider mums in this instance. And maybe if there's a little bit of small-headed, wispy things to just cover the, the collar. Or you can use leaves. There's some hellebore leaves out there that have like five fingers each. You could put that around the collar, something like that. Um, you can do some fancy footwork here if you want some more creativity going on, okay? But for now, just concentrate on getting three stems for the leaves, three stems for the flowers, and a little bit of filler, okay? Okay, all right, so this is my version of Nagere. And I did break the rules, as Vic said, but there aren't three blossoms in here. I know. <laughs> it depends on what it also sort of wants. It depends on what, you're, on what you're given. And I really fell in love with this vase. Mm. So I think if I tried to cram three flowers in here, it would take away. But I did observe Shin Soe Mikai. Okay? Shin being the highest, Soe being the medium, the Kai being the lowest. And they really represent the earth, no, the earth, the celestial regions, and the regions that man occupies in between heaven and earth. Okay, so when you're doing that arrangement, there is actual spiritual principles involved in what you're doing. Then ordinarily we would have an echo of that in the blossoms. And hopefully, given whatever container you're working with, you'll be able to do that. But just know that that's the basic formula so that you can deviate from it if you have to. But maybe when you get home, if you don't have the right container today, you could try to do it in the traditional way so that you know. Okay? <clears throat> so I'm just going to take it apart. And this is really important because when you leave today, you're going to have to dismantle your arrangements because they don't travel well. So it's good to at least get some of the basics, and that's really why you have your handouts, so that when you go back home, you can look at the schematic and see, oh, okay, well, these are the principles upon which I'm building this arrangement, and then you can replicate it. You also take into consideration the size of your container, and there is a formula for measuring. So ordinarily, with Shin, it's double the size of the container. Height-wise. Height-wise, plus the width. So I'm a little bit higher, but that's the general principle, okay? So one, two, Plus the width, I'm pretty close. And okay. that's for shin. That's for shin. Okay. Soe is, I think, three two quarters. thirds, three quarters? Three quarters of shin. So that's in a good proportion. So I started off with that. Shin. Now I forget where I am. The hand is in the I want this here to the outside. And when I chose my stems, I looked for which way they had their inclination. So how are they inclined? This already has a beautiful movement here. And then 
the chi is going to go down. And it's already growing. So when you're picking your material, look for things that are, okay, this will be a beautiful, graceful chin and supporting soe. And then hikai, look for something that's going off to the right. And if you can find something that has a crook that's already bent, that's going to come out this way, consider yourself blessed. Hmm. Okay? But this at least has the inclination. Okay. Somehow I think I got this backwards, but I think. Oops. I'll have to turn it around and look at it. And then for movement, I added the. Sometimes you have to pick this up because they'll fight with each other. Pick it up and put them down together and let this come and rest. And you may have to reset because they disturb one another sometimes. And sometimes you can use the stems. If you place it in front of a stem or behind a stem, it may help support something if it's rolling around. Okay. And then I like the persimmon for a punctuation point. So it's like a period at the end of a sentence. Okay? It's very quiet. It's just sitting there. But it's a stop. So I have structure. I can't see from the front. I hope you can tell me if it's off. And movement. And the movement stops so it doesn't go off. Okay, there was one other thing I was going to say. What was it? I think I had that in the other... I do. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you tell me? Because it looks <laughs> Does it? Does it work? Uh -huh. I think so. From my angle. Was yeah. the bittersweet on the other side? No. No? I wonder. The trailing one was on the other side. It was? All right. Thank you, Reva. We'll have to go to the videotape. Like, was that Jim Bolton used to say that? Was that Jim Bolton? Actually, the bittersweet was in the other one. Was it, Molly? Here's a photo. Oh. Ah, was it in this one? Yeah. Ah. But, but look, look, look how cool it looks from okay. the Okay, does it? Oh, you got it now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You never step into the same arrangement That's twice. That's right. <laughs> All right. So this is off. Oh, I'm, I'm going to need to turn it so I can see it from the front. Why is it off? It's off because, well, first of all, the shin got twisted. The soe ended up behind everything when it should be supporting the oh, shin on the outside. Okay. And the flower needs to be facing me better. And this got rolled around. So they like to roll, you know, especially if the stems are thin. They like to roll. Okay. I think it was perfect before I took it apart. Yes, it was. Okay. <laughs> okay. are competing with each other, either with the flower or with each other. Just take them away. Okay. It's a little off, it's but it's different. Yeah. It's different. Very different. But as you say, you can't always replicate. All right, shall we begin? And there is a basket outside the kitchen door. Of beautiful persimmons, if you want to have one as an accent point on your flat
Okay, so look at that. That's wonderful. I know we how to find a way to make this one behave the way you want it to. Okay. Behave. Yeah, that's what Steve would say. Behave. Sometimes, okay, let me see if this will work. Because you're working with glass here, so. All right. We wanted to have a little bit of an angle. You can cut it so that the cut leans against the glass. All right? So if you cut it this way, on an angle, it'll be less inclined to roll. See how that's going to sit against the front like that? Right? So sometimes that can buy you a little bit more control. I'm 47. Okay, so you're good. Right up there. Right? And we have about quarter inches. You know, I had one little, I knew a challenge, and that was because the neck is so narrow, I had to slice the stems, but it wouldn't go under a bowl. I have to get a deeper bowl in right. order to slice it. Right. But I managed. But it's, you know, the light air bubble is okay. That's so smart. Because okay. <laughs> I thought whoever gets this one is going to have a real challenge because this net is so easy. Yeah. 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 And you just did such a good job. Only how I do it is my own. But I think you don't ever know. Yeah, you don't ever know. Like, I don't like that. So before lunch, you all finish your nagiri, and we are just so ah, oh, we're in aesthetic arrest. Everybody <laughs> did such like beautiful work. <laughs> now we're going to move into the 20th century and with the Moribana, which is the low round container. And this comes with the O'Hara school and it's not the O'Haras from Ireland, it's the O'Haras from Japan. Uh, so at the turn of the 20th century, Mr. Unshin O'Hara invented a form done in a low bowl using some of the shorter stemmed western flowers that had been introduced at the beginning of the Maiji era. So this is really innovative for these people. Up until now, they've been using just their um, indigenous plants to work with. So this is very exciting. This is a really like cutting edge Wow, this reinvigorates the whole movement. So you've got all these wonderful new plant materials that you can work with. So, let's see, Moribana literally means piled up. So the other one meant thrown in, and this means piled up. And I am befuddled. I have no idea how that relates to these very structured arrangements, but that's the translation. O'Hara was a member of the Aikinobo school at the time, which remember was the, the oldest school, and with that wonderful pagoda temple with the pond by the pond, remember? But he broke away and set up a school of his own, still one of the largest and most prominent in Japan. So Patsy and I were just talking about this whole, this whole gestalt that, that works around how do you set up a new school? What happens when someone branches off and wants to do their own thing? And sometimes it breathes new life in, but depending, it can also bring denigration in. 
Like, ah. So it would, well, it can be, a, it can breathe new life, or it can be one turn or the other. You can, but it's yeah, never it. all of one thing, it's never all good or all bad. So there's always some new thing that you're going to benefit from by breathing new life into it. But it has to have some kind of structure and control so that it doesn't pull things down. And we all feel right now, hmm, on a planetary level, that things are in disintegration. And it's part of the whole movement. So if you imagine the human trajectory on a long arc, everything has a beginning. So it has its, its dawn, its morning, fresh new time. It's got its mid-morning and it's got its noon time, which in Sanskrit they call Udgita, its loud chant. So it's at its fullest expression. It's when your flowers are just fully open but not in declination yet. And then you go into autumn and then you go into winter. So it's the same for everything in life. The plants follow that dictum and humans follow that dictum. Cultures are born, they arise, they're infused with energy, and then they go into degradation. And that's kind of where we're at now. So we're finding ourselves as a human community in our twilight days. And then all kinds of things kind of come in and make it interesting. So they're in their uprising still. So they're in this whole new movement, and they're infused and excited, and this, this new low container allows for more freedom of possibility. Think of the Rika style that is so beyond our skill, that it's so complex we can't really do that well, because we don't have that kind of skill. But now we have the ability, we have this new thing, we can do this. So this was very exciting. So he broke up away and he set up a school of his own, one of the largest and most prominent in Japan. And a major innovation of the late 19th century was the appearance of the Kenzan. Mm. So that's where everybody's wondering, well, we call it a frog. What is it? What do you, what do you, we call it sometimes it's called a pin holder. Their word for it was Kenzan, and that's the one I prefer to use because that's what it was born with. That's its name when it was born, was Kenzan. So I prefer to go with that. That had the vertical needles on which branches and stems can be impaled. This Kenzan is a technical basis, without which Moribana style could not exist. So without having that control at the foundation, there's no way for you to say, well, I have this tight cylinder like with the Nagere, that kind of holds your stems from going, falling out. This has nothing to constrain the stems. So there's this wonderful, you could compare it to the Sufis, where they have that wonderful movement, right? Where they do the twirling, right? You could almost see this as a Sufi dance, if you wanted to look at it that way. There are always similarities and threads that weave through all cultures that we can all relate to because we're all human. So that's what we're going to start with now, and then I think we'll just talk about something later. So go ahead, fill your containers with water, and we'll come back and I will dismantle this one again, and we'll redo it so you can see how it goes together, and then consult your handouts if you need a little technical assistance, and we'll see what kind of magic you do this afternoon. I think, okay. have, I think everyone has water. Oh, you do. So. Okay, then get some plant material. And you're going to need the same as you needed for the nagiere. So you're going to need three beautiful blossoms, three wonderful stems, and then some filler to hide the kenzan and hide the mechanics. Three angle. I'm all busy, Tanner. How much do you need for it? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> you love it? 
Well, I've had it a long time, but I don't use it that much. So if you want to switch it out. Are you sure? Yeah. The hole on the sides will make it. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I see what you did. You went ahead and... I know, i got to get her in the water first. Then. We'll see what you can do. So there, you don't want your flowers touching each other. You want them to be able to see your bowl. Now, this makes me I don't think I'm touched. You might have to remove some of these. So there's not too many. Right, so judiciously. And then maybe you can use them in some other way. But cut the stem as long as you possibly can. Yeah. Are you going to use all the dust no, you are my mom to get Maybe there's some other little container. Are you going to try the wide leaf one? Maybe a wee bit. Well, sure. then it's good that there's a benefit there to that. <laughs> yeah. And then. Yes, I, definitely. I'm probably not going to try for the This one? I don't care. Yeah. You know, it's, the way you do it is to get down, it doesn't depend on it. It's there. I used to plant it and break the stem. Direction. I had some that I didn't use. Let's have it down. 